how's it going so today i am adding a few sun perennials in my butterfly garden which is um, in my side yard and i'm going to share with you the plants that i'm adding and i've actually placed them around where i want to add them so i'll walk around and i'll show you the plants and i'll share with you the details on the plants and then i'll get the plants in the ground and uh, give you a final walk around on around what that looks like so the first plant that i'm adding is this beautiful new sedum that i got this is a proven winners sedum called rock and round bundle of joy so first of all i love these names i mean it just makes me happy because the name is so 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 adorable i love this bundle of joy i mean look at it it does look like a bundle of joy i mean the the leaves are so delicate and wispy i like how it's so so delicate looking the sedum so that's what attracted me um towards it so this plant forms a low rounded mound in spring and it grows to just under one foot tall by summer its light green leaves become covered in a dome of pure white flowers followed by pretty seed heads so excited to see what this looks like as you can see this is the picture it has a beautiful white blooms um, and um, let's see um, so again it's a short in height 10 to 12 inches it's probably going to spread about 16 inches and it's perennial in zones 3 to 9 so quite hardy up to minus 40 and it blooms in early fall and it needs full sun um, so yeah so i'm thinking of planting three of these um, just at the edge of my um, garden here so as i walk towards the garden i do have some dianthus here and so this sedum will be like a nice color towards the end of the season and even when it's not blooming the leaves are going to look really really structural in this space and that's why i kind of wanted to add this plant here and then i have a few of this beautiful candy tuft it's called um candy tuft tahoe i hope i'm saying it properly so it is a candy it's a beautiful beautiful white blooming perennial um, and it's low growing and um, it can go in full sun to part shade um, and it is it's glossy green foliage with clusters of small white flowers it's early flowering and it's low maintenance and drought tolerant and it is really going to flower from may to june which will be nice because I really need something early in this in this spot and it's hardy up to zones 3a so very very hardy so it's more of a ground cover type plant it's deer resistant and it's good for borders and mixed borders so some of the so this plant is pretty much done it's bloom um, blooming but there are still like maybe some blooms on it I don't know if I can focus and show you what that looks like so so what my plan is um is to kind of i don't know why my camera is doing funny things today but um i'm going to plant them around this circle this little seating area that i have here so i'm going to plant this all around this circle so that when it blooms this whole circle is covered in white bloom so that's the plan um, and then the other plant that i am going to be adding is a few veronica so this is a beautiful veronica called first memory um, and it's got soft blue stalks um, but i don't think this one is first memory because it doesn't have blue blooms as you can see it has these pink blooms so i have a feeling that this plant was mislabeled i got it on clearance on a plant sale so I, I took whatever was left over so there isn't much to much to say that it's going to have blue blue blooms but i think it's going to have pink blooms but it's labeled as first memory so i don't know we'll see when it blooms but regardless veronica is a really long flowering summer um, perennial it has these beautiful spike like blooms and it's going to bloom for a really long time in the summer and you can come out and deadhead it and it should flush out some more blooms as well um, 
and then at least that's been my experience that it has been long blooming in my garden so there's two of those i have one more over there and then i also have some other sedum so this sedum is called tiramisu so this one is rock and grow tiramisu um this this will um this is also a proven winner's um, sedum uh, called Rock and Grow Tiramisu. And as you can see, it has these beautiful um, peachy buds that open up to a creamy white. So almost looks like a tiramisu. Um, so it displays many colors over the growing season, much like the dessert. Bronze leaves form a wide dome-shaped habit it's got pink buds that open to cream flowers late in the season and it performs well in full sun and poor to average well-drained soil and it does not require supplemental water it's going to grow about 18 to 20 inches uh, tall and it's going to spread quite a bit 45 to 50 centimeters perennials in zones three to nine so very hardy and it's like it's going to bloom late summer to early fall. So, so I have a few of these plants which I am planning to um, kind of um, space them and put them put them in a drift over here. So they're gonna go around this way. So I'm going to plant them so that they they kind of um, show up later in the season and and kind of offer that color. And and when they're not blooming. The bronzy foliage will kind of play well with the other flowers that are in there um, so I think it's going to look really really pretty in here so I'm going to uh, kind of layer them in there and then I also have another beautiful um, speedwell Veronica called perfectly Picasso so this is a spike speedwell which can grow in full sun to part shade and it has um, about two feet tall and two feet wide it needs more than four hours of daily sun and it's hardy in zones four to eight it's going to bloom early to midsummer and it it's good to pair with daisies and bee balm which i am not pairing it with i am actually going to put it in front of these beautiful yellow roses and my nepeta and um, i think it's going to look nice with the spiky pink foliage uh, sorry blooms and it's going to kind of play well with the roses that I have going in the back there and what I'm planning to do is also put this beautiful golden oregano right in front so that it kind of offers that yellow kind of contrast and foliage in the front so that's the plan um, and then the last plant that I want to share with you that I will be adding is this salvia so this is a uh, beautiful um, salvia almost like a crystal blue salvia but this one is called it's not a proven winners variety this one is called bumble sky salvia so this is um, beautiful light kind of periwinkle blue um, and uh, it's a light sky blue flowers on a low mounded habit and it's um, pollinator attractant obviously because that pollinators love salvia it loves full sun um, and medium moisture 14 to 16 inches tall and 18 to 20 inches um, in inches uh, wide and it's hardy up to zones 3a and it's going to it's a spring summer and fall bloomer so it's going to bloom all season so which is exciting and that's the good part about salvia and amorosas they bloom for a really long time so what i'm planning to do is create like a drift drift of these down below here so i've started creating a drift of almost like bluish blooms all the way from top so i have a lot of catmint on top so i think taking it down to this level would be amazing uh, and adding a bunch of um, bunch of bunch more blue over here would be great and I'm also adding some ground cover um, ajuga in here. So this ajuga is called, um, uh, what is this called? This is called bronze, bronze beauty. So this one again is a spring flowering. Um, oops, 
sorry I almost lost my camera so it's a spring flowering perennial um, and it's going to have these beautiful purple blooms um, and it blooms um, hardy in USDA zones 3 and it's going to grow about 6 inches tall and beautiful flower spikes um, complement rich burgundy foliage that attract hummingbirds so vigorous spreading plants with superb ground cover for difficult situations such as dry shade underneath trees or slopes so really excited i have about uh, five of these that i'm going to spread out in this area and hopefully you know they will kind of take over and provide um, a bunch of like um, ground cover action in this spot and bloom early um, and add some color and uh, nectar for the pollinators so that's what i'm planning to do today is get these plants in the ground and kind of enrich my butterfly garden a little bit more this spot here gets a little bit shadier as we go on but um, for most part i do get a lot of sun in this area so lots of these plants will be happy um, in this spot and they're going to add a lot of color throughout the season so i'm going to get the plants in the ground and i'll show you when i'm all done what this section looks like and uh and if I end up changing something that I thought about originally, I'll also let you know. Um, and I forgot to mention one other plant here. I have a nepeta that I'm adding in that spot over there as well, just to pull through some more blue color. This one is called Picture Perfect Nepeta. So that's what this one is called. It doesn't have too many details. It just is hardy up to zone three and it's going to be about 25 centimeters tall. So it's gonna get pretty tall, about two feet. So it's one of those bigger napetas, and I think it'll be nice in that spot because it'll fill in and it'll offer that blue that I'm looking for in that corner. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna add these plants in the ground and I'll show you what this section looks like when I'm all done. I am done planting and I wanted to show you where everything ended up. So I put the catmint in that corner over there because I think it's going to be a nice addition in that corner. It's going to fill in and it's going to add a nice purple uh, bloom and color over there and it's going to look great there. So I kind of added added that over there. And, and then I also added the Veronica. This is um, first memory but I don't think it is, it's I think mislabeled, but it's a pink one. So I added one there, it could be perfectly Picasso. I added one there and I also added one in the back over there. So it's kind of um, going to also spread out and, and create like a little bit of a rounded habit. So I think it's fine over there. And then what I did was I put candy tuft all around this circular seeding area so i have candy tuft plants going all around this and then i also had a couple of them kind of layered in over here and then what i did was i added my uh, perfectly picasso veronica in the front here with the uh with the um light colored uh, um lemon colored thyme so this is the golden uh, sorry the golden oregano so i added that in the front there and uh, just wanted to also show you how beautifully these oh so easy lemon zest roses are blooming aren't they so beautiful i love it against the cat mint colors um i think they just look stunning um and then what i also did was i um also added my sedums like these are the tiramisu sedums um, all here so I kind of added one plant beside each step so that it kind of creates a little bit of a drift over here since I had three plants and then I also added uh, initially I was going to add them in this spot but I think they would have just kind of um, disappeared in the back there so I wanted to have them in the front a little bit more so that they can offer a little bit of color later on in the season so I have um, have one plant here and I have one plant here so this they start off here and then I have three plants going down over there so I think it's going to add like a nice um, drift here but also not kind of create a hedge so I think it'll be a nice 
um, color and and when the plant is not in bloom the foliage is very very pretty it's got this beautiful coloration it's it's kind of got a little bit of a darker color so i think it stands out even without the bloom so i like the foliage just on its own um, and then what i did was i also added a bunch of salvias down here so these are the um the light blue almost like a crystal blue salvia so i added these over here in a little bit of a drift going down here um, so i think this will it's not a perfectly symmetrical drift there is a little bit of a curve and it kind of goes in a little bit so i like how this is looking here and then i added the bronze beauty ajuga all around here so i've done that and um, finished adding all of these plants in these spots and i also had um, pale coneflower which i added over here pale coneflower is different from uh, the regular um, um, coneflower the echinacea purpurea this is i think echinacea pallida uh, if i'm saying it correctly and this one has these really tall blooms and the petals face downward and and the, so they are quite different they are kind of almost like a prairie style coneflower so i added one plant here um this spot may not get a lot of sun in the evening but it does get a lot of full sun in the morning so these plants should do well in this spot um, i'll keep an eye on them and if they need a little bit more sun i will move them but for now i think i like them in this spot so so yeah the plants are in the in the ground and they look absolutely amazing i like um, all the plants that i've added today and i wanted to show them to you where i place them i hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video give me do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified every time i upload a video and with that i wanted to wish everyone a very very happy and a beautiful gardening day thanks for joining me